this, this is your story, right? This is your, as, as much as Mark had to respond to it, this was your immediate journey. So I, I definitely want to give you an opportunity to take us into how it felt to find out that this is what you were dealing with. And then how did it feel to know that you were in a marriage that could handle that? Yeah, um, when it happened, it was extremely scary. Um, it, it, we thought it, I was, I was, we, was, we, were, um, we were in South Carolina with mm -hmm. my family, my mom. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my mom. They're celebrating 16 years of anniversary. Hey, mom. Mm -hmm. um, but we were in South Carolina and my whole entire face, like I, I kept saying something. I was like, y'all, something, something's not right. And they were like, yeah. oh, something you ate, you're allergic to something. I was like, all right. But then moments, minutes, seconds later, it just went completely paralyzed. And to the point, my mom was like, oh my God, are you having a stroke? Like my whole, if you would have saw how it. Did you, how, how did that make you feel? I just felt, I was scared. I was mm -hmm. completely scared. And at the time, I didn't know it was Bell's palsy. We didn't know it was Bell's palsy until the next day. We literally thought I was just having a stroke. Mm -hmm. We, we, my yeah. mom was like, you're, you could be possibly having a stroke because those were all symptoms of a stroke. Right. Um, so we, right. literally, we rushed to the ER, um, but I couldn't feel anything. Like if you were to punch me, I couldn't feel anything. My, my right, the eye was closed. It was just, it was just really scary at that moment. And I felt, I, I felt bad. I felt scared. I went into a major, major depression because you know, I'm used to, you know, putting on my lashes and, you know, doing my makeup. And at this very instant, I just felt completely ugly. I didn't feel beautiful inside. I went back to that little girl who didn't feel love from her father. Um, and that really took a strain on our marriage because I remember one time Mark had went out right when I was just in the gist of it. And I was home and I didn't want to be on any calls or I didn't want anybody to come to the house. I didn't want no flowers or anything. And he took his mom out to dinner. And I remember texting my best friend, BJ, and I was like, I'm so upset, you know, I can't go out to restaurants. And I was really, and I really took it out on him and it had nothing to do with him, but it was because I was very insecure. I was yeah. very insecure yeah. about how I look. And God just had to remind me that it's not about outside appearance at all. It's really about your internal heart. And that's yeah. how I believe I got healed so quickly. Because when I went back to my doctor after three weeks, she was like, like she was shocked herself and she's a professional medical doctor. And she was like, we was expecting this to be seven years or seven months and mine healed in, in 46 days. But, but, but you know, Brittany, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off, but, 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 but what I want to understand, what interests me about this moment, take me into the moment when you knew that your marriage can handle this crisis. Oh, I, I knew it. When every single day, Mark would wake up and pray over my face. He would literally wake up. He had some oil that he probably got from Elder Bestie. Uh, <laughs> but he would wake up every morning and he would pray over my face. Mm -hmm. He would run me a bath. And like he said, he would speak words of affirmation. He would be like, babe, you don't need them lashes. You know, like you look beautiful. Your, <laughs> smile, is, your smile is going to come back. But he literally, like you could see how, how much I was hurting. You could see it also bothered him. It also was hurting for him, but he knew he had to be very strong for me because what if both of us are weak? You know, that's not how God intended our marriage to be. So yeah. every single day he would either bring me flowers, run my bath. Every morning he prayed over my face. Um, and just to really show that agape love in our marriage is like it through sickness and in health. And that's what we yeah. said in our vows, right? So we got to really live it. It was, it was a test of it. And, you know, I, I thank God for that challenge because it just reminded us of what we can get through together as a young couple. Cause this was just like year, year one, year, year two. Um, how, 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 how old are y'all by the way? I never asked that. I'm 34. I'm 31. You're 34 and 31. You know, what's interesting about everything you're saying is that you, you have a, you have a perspective about marriage and love that's well beyond your years. Um, <laughs> you know, life, life, life has packed a lot into those three years, um, but, but, I, but I'm going to I'm going to change gears a little bit and ask you um, what everybody who's cynical like me wants to ask you, and that is, what do y'all do when you're getting on each other's nerves? <laughs> well, who want to go first, me or, uh, or you? I'll let you take out, you go first, you go All first. right, so I have very low patience, like about this a lot. So Mark gets in my nerves a lot. So what we do is, and we're in a very small apartment. I just, I keep it real, I'm sorry. People know that I keep it real. And we're in a very small apartment. So I will either have to go outside for a walk, 
go for a drive or something because I just I I just get annoyed a lot. I get annoyed for dishes being in my sink every night. And that's a real thing. Like we had an argument maybe 45 minutes before this show came on. <laughs> Why is dishes in my sink and we're about to go live? I, I have OCD too. But uh, when we get on each other's nerves, hey, one Brittany, thing is, Brittany, we can't yeah. even see the sink. The sink is not even in the shot. It don't matter. It don't matter. It doesn't matter. I have OCD. The dishes have to be out the sink. They do. They do. They have to be out my sink. It was a busy day. It was a busy day. So you, so you, when, 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 you hit, when you hit the stress level or max, you you have to. I, yeah, I'll go, walk, I'll, go walk, walk. Walk. Yep, I'll go walk. Yep, I'll go walk outside um, on the patio or something. Or I'll put my headphones in, just just listen to Tasha Cobbs or something. But yeah, I, I just have to go for a walk or something because I I know my temper. I I have a really bad temper. Yeah, that's that's one thing about us. Mark, what about you? I was the one thing that was the most frustrating thing, especially when we got into this marriage, was our styles of handling arguments. Because Brittany is a firecracker, and I'm more of a quiet guy, you know. So trying to find that healthy balance of you know, how to get her to calm down. How do I come up? You know, so, so it's like- What do you do? Well, what do you do? What I do? Conflict, yes. What do I you do? I turn on the Xbox and mind my business. It frustrates <laughs> her even more. I put on my Xbox and she hates that. Oh my God. <laughs> because I sit there like nothing's going on and that that's that's how I, I get over it is I let my mind focus on something that's just not going to make it worse. You know, what's, what's interesting, what, what I love about that is that in as much as you guys, as, as I perceive it to be, you have a good, a genuine, mostly healthy relationship, but you're also able to talk about the fact that m marriage is also about getting on each other's nerves. Oh, absolutely. I, for, for a long time, I, I was dealing with a couple and uh, they were having significant problems in their marriage mm -hmm. and they had lost a child at the very beginning of their marriage. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the arguments and the fights escalated and they were just getting real, you know, real. So I gave them a strategy. Brittany, tell me what you think about this strategy. I said, from now on, when it, when, when it gets, when you guys get to the red zone and one of you can't take it anymore, go into your daughter's bedroom mm -hmm. and get the teddy bear you told me about mm -hmm. and just hand it to the other. And it will be a symbol and a sign that you can't take anymore. Yeah. And out of respect, whatever the argument is, it has to stop. That's amazing. Yeah, I love because the love you have for that child Absolutely. will be the love that keeps you together. What you think about that? No, I love that. And that's something our, our mentors taught us. Um, shout out to our mentors, JJ and Trina and the Procope. But that is something they taught us is that no matter how heated it gets, we can't ever go to bed angry. Man, yep. And so we give ourselves one to two hours max. We can to have not, that space. Yeah, to, to have, have that, that space yep. to be mad. If you get the silent mm. treatment, like two hours max. And we, and we got to talk it out. We mm -hmm. have to talk it out. We have to come to some type of resolution. And it's going to be sometimes, it's, it's a lot of times that I, I don't like it. I never had you to know? sleep on the couch. Let's put it you like know, that. Has, that I never had to sleep on the couch. He has to sleep on the couch. Married three years, son. Keep going. Fuck, <laughs> 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 Interview us in about year 40 and, and see. see, see All right, right. <laughs> about, see about, about, about year 25, you'll be like, I've been on the couch. Right. He's a little pallet on the couch right, over there. Man. Uh, but right now in year three, we have not had any of those moments. Uh, we have, we have definitely had heated moments. Absolutely. But we haven't okay. gotten to a place where it's like, okay, you, you out, you, you're on the couch or you're gone. Listen, I got, I got about seven minutes left. I, I got a few questions I want to get into both of you. Um, but Mark, what's, what's your advice to young couples, young couples who are either dating or engaged or newly married? What's your best advice to young couples? One advice I can give is to really take the time to learn each other through seasons because people change through seasons. And if you give up on somebody too early, you may miss out on the blessing that God has had for you. So I will always say, wait out the season, see how a person reacts in arguments, because that's a telltale sign of if you can handle a person. And the last thing is know the difference between yellow flags and red flags. A lot of people are leaving relationships with yellow flags. Yellow flags can be worked on. They can be fixed. Red flags. A lot of people stay in relationship with red flags and then when they get into the marriage, they're ready to call it quits. So that's my advice I can give to young couples is look out for those flags and which ones can you live with and which one can you um, not live with? Because once you get into marriage, whatever you don't like about the person, it magnifies by 10. Yeah. <laughs> that's written. Mark, all of that's rich. That's rich <laughs> and valuable and useful. And if we weren't on live TV, 
I'd have stolen some of it and acted like I stole. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, listen, Brittany, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a different question, okay. but but no less significant. And that is, um, explain to everybody as you see it, as your experience with Mark has taught you. What's the difference between being in love with someone and loving someone? Oh, that's good. That's a good one. So for me, being in love with him, in love with him is really seeing his heart. You know, really seeing what he can do as as a person, as a young man of God. Because what was important to me was that you got to be able to love with your heart no matter what. So even if it's days where I get on your nerves or I'm doing something that you don't really approve of, you got to be able to still love me with your heart. And just being in love with you, I'm sorry, loving you is just like that day to day. Like, And not every day I'm going to wake up loving you. I just want people to understand that you're not, I'm not waking up every single day loving you but what what's going to keep us and what keeps us daily is your actual heart Absolutely. that yeah. is what's going to make me stay in love with you and on the day-to-day -day constantly loving him I, as, as i listen to you I, I actually think that what you mean is the reverse that oh, that, okay. that that not every day i'm in love with you yeah not, not every yes. day i want to spend all my time with your behind Absolutely. I'm yes. always going to love you. I'm always going to love you, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, and, and I think you're absolutely right, by, by the way, because I think in love is about infatuation and desire, but yes. loving someone is about sacrifice. Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes. yes. absolutely. So true. Yeah. You, guys, you, guys so, you guys so young and, and just bright and just, you know, <laughs> if, if, I, if, I, if I didn't know better, I'd think about getting married. Hey, oh, might be on. there. Join the club, Dr. Shah. Join You're the right club. There. Come on. I'm not there for my life. No. <laughs> <laughs>